Hey everybody and welcome to another Basement Collective Battle Report. Today we have 1500 of Blood Angels versus Orcs. Now let's check with the Blood Angel Army. Today we're actually using the Archangel Strike Force Detachment. So that's where you gotta have one HQ and up to 12 elites. And so what we did is we, uh, first of all we have our HQ, our Librarian. I don't have my Blood Angel Terminator Librarian, but I'll get one so I'm using my Green Hunt. And then this army I actually just got recently is all converted. So I do like it, it's quite good. Uh, I am boring some drop pods because my drop pods are on order as well as my uh, ball predators. But anyways, we'll take a look regardless. Here's a Terminator squad. Now these are just normal uh, Terminators, normal, uh, I guess it'd be tactical Terminators with a Cyclone Missile Launcher. My Sergeant, I know doesn't have a Power Fist, but uh, we'll just play, he does. This is a uh, converted Storm Raven. Land Raider now it looks kind of cool. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm the biggest fan of it But it does look pretty sweet. Yeah, uh, so he he loved all the angel wings and all that And then we have dreadnoughts now. I'm sorry all these are not what you see is what you get But I do have eight dreadnoughts in this army <laughs> and for the purpose of this game They all have a frag cannon and a heavy flamer. So we'll just take a look at each dreadnought there Yes, yeah, so these are all been converted. I got the army like this. I am in love with it. We got dual hammer bro over there. And of course, six drop pods. So that's 1,500 points of blood angels. Since I took this formation, I get the special rule that is called Storm of Angels. I get to reroll failed reserve rolls for units in this attachment. And they only scouted 1d6 instead of 2d6. So we're going to have a lot of flame in on them orcs. And here we have Eric's 1,500 points of orcs. All right, we'll start off with our uh, our warlord. Uh, looks like a regular war boss, but he actually has mega armor. He's just the nicest model I have to represent it. Uh, he'll have a power claw and a shooter. Uh, next to him will be a pain boy. I couldn't find my pain boy, so I'm using a broken grossnik model instead. And then accompanying them will be four mega knobs. They're just regular mega knobs with their twinling shooters, I believe they come with. And they'll be riding in the spider wagon, who has one big shooter and a reinforced ram. And next, we'll go into our troops. We got two shooter boy squads and rhinos, which I'm proxying in as trucks because I forgot mine. Uh, the trucks have reinforced rams, and the knobs in the squads uh, both have power claws as an upgrade. And then I have two troops of 18 boys, plus each one has a knob with the power claw. These are just regular slugger boys. And over here we have probably my favorite unit to play, it's 15 Lutas and a Battle Wagon, which has a reinforced ram, which I don't have to use in this, and it also has a big shooter. And then lastly we have a DACA jet, the extra super shooter. Much DACA. Much DACA, we'll see. And there you have 1500 of orcs. Okay guys, so now for game types, actually, uh, so I'm running a tournament in two weeks, I'm the tournament organizer for my local shop, and what we're doing is actually we're playing uh, the LVO, we're playing a modified LVO, we're using that as a base, so we have three scenarios we're playing, we're going to play scenario three, which primary is the crusade, so there's D3 plus uh, two objectives, and if you win that objective, or if you capture have the most objectives at the end of the game, you get four points. Uh, the secondary is modified maelstrom, so there's a separate table we roll in at, at the each of game turn. We each roll two dice, and we'll see what objectives we have for our turn. And then finally, uh, tertiary objectives are bonus points, as they're called. Uh, it's first blood, nine breaker, and slay the warlord. So you can get a max of ten points, four for the primary, three for the secondary, and three for bonus points. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game will win. So it's possible to not get not win the primary, but yet still win the game. Yeah, and the deployment is Hammer Vanderbilt, so we'll come back after we have the table set up for you. And we have Psychic Powers. My Warlord uh, rolled the all on divination. So he knows four warding and four boating. Four boarding lets them fire Overwatch at full ballistic skill. And, uh, yep. And they, they have the counterattack special, which is kind of good. And then uh, four warding gives a unit of four plus involve safe. My Warlord trade, I roll from the Blight is one, I get. I got adamantium well, which is kind of redundant on my librarian. What'd you get there? Uh, lightning something or other, lightning strike or something. Uh, basically, uh, get fleet for anyone within 12 inches. Sounds pretty good to me. Let's roll to see who's going to deploy first. Uh, we're playing hammer and anvil, and this is the table. Uh, some Gale Force 9 terrain. We're actually got another terrain in the work. Another terrain set being ordered right now. It's an alien set. 
So anyways, three, three, three. We're gonna do this again. Five <laughs> to five. One, one. one. <laughs> oh, oh, I will deploy first. All right. We'll come back to you after deployment. And here we have deployment. We have a whole lot. Uh, the Blood Eagles side of the field. There's my deployment. And Eric, smartly so, is avoiding some flamers and alpha strikes, so he has a bunch in reserve. What's in reserve? Uh, I got the two squads of truck boys, the wagon, or the battle wagon with the looters in it, and the Sweet. And here's the deployment, nicely spaced out and f afraid of the flamers. <laughs> And there we go. So we have our four crusade objectives. One right there, two, three, and four. And Maelstrom objective one and Maelstrom objective two for the modified Maelstrom mission. Okay, do you want to try seizing the initiative? It, it. It's a seizure of initiatives. Blind Angels, first turn. Orcs, first turn. Orcs, first turn. <laughs> now, after probably the quickest first turn I've seen in history, this. Chuck moved up, and since the whole Ark Army couldn't do anything to the Land Raider, that was the end of the turn. They did not capture any of the Maelstrom's objectives. They had to do uh, destroy a unit. They couldn't hit, they couldn't touch this, and they, they had to have a scoring unit at least partially within my enemy deployment zone. Well, my deployment zone, the enemy deployment zone, and they couldn't do that either. So the Blood Angels just moved the truck up, and they're waiting for the Dreadnoughts to come down. So it'll be Blood Angels first turn. And the Blood Angels turn one. This guy dropped back here to capture my Maelstrom objectives and hold objective 2. Also, but both of those are within my deployment zone. So that's 3 units, so I captured my objective 6 as well for my Maelstrom. So I captured both of mine to Eric's 9. <clears throat> and then these two guys over here drop potted in, uh, destroying, what is that, 9 out of the squad or 8 out of the squad? Something like that. Including, including the Mega Knob, so that's good for me. And they failed the morale test, so they're running back. And so that is the end of uh, Blood Angels turn one, we'll go to Orcs turn two. We have the Orcs turn two, the Dakajet and one truck came in. Uh, the Dakajet blew up one of the the um, the Dreadnoughts. And then uh, these guys hopped out here and charged the drop pod, giving him both his Maelstrom points, so it's two to two, and now it's Blood Angels top of turn. Or I guess it's the bottom of turn two for Blood Angels. And Eric did get first blood. So right now he's technically winning the game one to zero. Blood Angels turn two. And we have the Blood Angels turn two. Now all my drop pods came in of course because they came in three rolls. So they all came in here trying to take out the Mega Knob squad. I managed to kill zero Mega Knobs. Some good feel no painting and armor saves yeah, over here. But I did manage to kill the Warlord at least. So that's one point. That's two points for me actually. My well it's one point for the Maelstrom objective. And uh, one point for the game point, so we're tied one to one in the game. This guy over here failed his charge. This guy just moved up, and this guy moved up 12 inches and shot here and did nothing. So that's going to be the end of the turn of Blood Angels turn three. Uh, turn two, it's currently three Maelstrom points to Eric's two. And we have the end of Orcs turn three. Uh, they, the boys, the, these guys charged in. And I managed to get three hits on my Dreadnoughts, and then I rolled three ones. He multi-charged, which I, so I should have killed most of the squad, but of course I killed none. And he managed to draw, wipe out that Dreadnought. Shooting, managed to do two wounds on that Dreadnought, because I can't make cover saves. And yeah, just a lot of moving around. The Daka Jet flew off the board. It is now Blood Angels, turn three. And he did manage to cap capture objective one, and also kill a unit for his Maelstrom objective. So right now, it is four to three Maelstrom points. Oh. And we have the end of Blood Angels turn three. This guy moved up, killed four orcs with his dual flamers there. This did nothing, just sat back there. This moved up, deployed these guys, shot and killed three orcs, failed the charge. I also got prescience off of them at least. Uh, finally, this guy charged into the blood to the knobs over here with help from the one that was already in combat and was able to kill the knobs like the squad. This guy ran over here just so his. Just so uh, he can't get back arc on anything, so, so it's all gonna be front even with the DACA jet. Anyways, yep, yeah, that's the turn. These guys, uh, actually, these two drop pod shot at the boys, made them run, and then he ran up. I was able to capture one Maelstrom objective. So right now we're tied on Maelstrom four to four, and we both he has first blood, and I have slayed the warlord. So 
yeah, that's the end of Blood Angels turn three. We're tied for Maelstrom and we're tied for game points. It's a pretty close game so far. It is. We have the end of the orcs turn four. Yeah. Uh, basically, Dakajet came back on, destroyed the back dreadnought. This dreadnought has one move left. Uh, yeah, and these boys came in and charged up and killed three of my Terminators. I was shooting and charging. This guy came over here to get one mail support, and that guy came over here to capture two for two mail supports. And these guys attempted to charge, but lost seven of the guys on Overwatch. Yeah, that was pretty brutal. Yeah, so uh, it's not looking good for the Blood Angels. Eric got both his points that time, so it's currently uh, six points to four points now on Maelstrom. But we will come back to you at the end of the turn for Blood Angels turn four. And that was the end of the Blood Angels turn four. Uh, this combat happened. He lost combat, didn't do any wounds, and he failed. And he had a mob roll, so then he lost three more guys due to that. These guys both ran, moved and ran up. Uh, this guy destroyed the truck that was there, and the Land Raider took out the lonely guy. I managed to get one of my Maelstrom points, so that's going to be five to Eric six Maelstrom, so he's still winning on the secondary. Other than that, we're still locked to combat here. I have those two Dreadnoughts left and a bunch of drop pods, but that seems to be all. For the blood so it's not looking good. We'll see what happens. At the end of Eric's turn five. Now this is not variable gain. It does end at turn five. So hopefully Eric gets two pretty good. Yeah. Okay. And so here we go. Blood angels. Nope. Orcs turn five. Okay. So we have orcs turn five. Last turn for orcs. This guy. These guys came up. Uh, Dakajet managed to explode. Guy right here. He's holding that objective there. He did manage. He didn't get to manage any of his maelstrom points this turn. So and uh, I will get one maelstrom point on my turn. So there is that. So we tied in maelstrom, and then uh, he got one main objective, two main objectives, and three main objectives. And I'll be. And I have one over there. So I'll get one maelstrom point. So we'll be tied in maelstrom. No one's got maelstrom. I got. He's not gonna have line breaker. I will have line breaker, and it's all up to the primary. Now, actually, I just thought of something. See, I'll bring these guys back, explode this up, and hopefully hold the objective at that point. See. And then otherwise, these guys are going to move up here. Yep. So we have uh, Blood Angels turn five, last turn of the game. Yep. So end of the Blood Angels turn five. They managed to squeak out the victory. These guys came back, destroyed this. I'm holding that objective. I do have line breaker. Eric does not, unfortunately. I'm holding this objective over here. Eric's holding that one, and I'm contesting this, so I went on the primary. So the final score, since Maelstrom was zeroed out, is Eric's got uh, one point, and I have six points, game points. So we'll do come back with a post game show for you guys. Thank you guys for another watching the Basement Collective Bat Rep. Uh, we have Kevin and Eric. And yeah, we just had a pretty another close game. That was my new Blood Angels versus Eric's. My orcs. His old orcs. Or my Eric's. His, <laughs> Eric's? His Eric's? My Eric's. That, that's, that's not really funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's funny. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that was another close game. I managed to win. Uh, we, I, I, Like I said, I'm running a tournament in two weeks here, March 21st. So if you're any, anywhere around in uh, the Ontario region, Northern Ontario. If you want to come up to the Subway for a tournament, let me know. I can get you more details on that. Anyways, uh, we're just testing out one of the scenarios. I am the tournament, 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 tournament organizer. There we go. Yep. So uh, based off the the ITC circuit or the LVO was uh, was what we took those from. So yeah, it was pretty fun. It's uh, it's different working on two missions at the same time instead of one. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It's the first time I ever played something like that. And you're just constantly running for objectives. It seems to yeah. favor faster armies. Yeah, yeah, so that was a close game. I managed to win at the end by getting a dreadnought charge, contesting, and a blowing up of a tank. No, but other than that, it was, it was pretty close. Yeah, the secondary is nice too. It's not, when you normally play Maelstrom, you kind of you get cards that you just can't get. Yeah. And then this one, it seems like you're always within reach of getting the objective. Yeah, and it's just one D, it's a D6 table, so. Yeah. Yeah, so like for this, our secondary, our maelstrom, it's a modified maelstrom, so it's 1d6, so you roll, uh, you had to either uh, hold objective 1 or 2, so there was uh, two maelstrom objectives, and then destroy an enemy unit for 3 and 4, 5 and 6, is score a unit if you have a unit, score a point if you have a unit at least partially within your enemy's deployment zone, and finally 6 is have at least 3 of your scoring units and no enemy scoring units. So they're all, they're all pretty, 6 is probably the hardest one to get there. 
Yeah, especially if you're against drop pods. Yeah, yeah, because you have four drop pods and he's only like, well, I'm never getting that. Yeah, and the objective they were on is also never getting that. So. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, so first turn, I second turn, I brought in three drop pods, three frag cannon dreadnoughts all attacking a Meganox club and managed to kill zero Meganox. <laughs> Got the war boss, though. Got the war boss. But so there's a nice lineup of drop pods and dead carcasses. Of, I wouldn't guess they're not carcasses, the coffee guys. Yeah. Of dreadnoughts. Yeah, the Dakajet to uh, clean them up pretty good. And they certainly did. managed to kill three of them by himself. Yeah, the Dakajet definitely got his points back. I've never seen a Dakajet do so good except in that game. Yeah, uh, he was kind of uncontested in the air. Yeah. Their superiority for the Orcs for sure. Yeah, so uh, the Blood Angel Army I got in last week, uh, there's still a couple more things to come in, but I just want to try the Dreadnoughts. I'm sorry, but not what you see is what you get. I might order some Freight Cannons online so I could maybe play this list in a tournament. Because it's all magnetized. Uh, I got that guy from. I got that from a guy in Quebec, and it was a really nice army. I traded my Iron Hands army for it. My Forge was one. Now it wasn't painted, so I figured I got the better end of that deal, and I can restart the Iron Hands whenever. Yeah. yeah. Definitely look really cool on the table. Yeah. Except for the Land Raider. The Land Raider. The, what do you, let me tell me what you guys think about the Land Raider. <laughs> it's like, like it would have made more sense if when they first spoiled Land Raiders and they hadn't had a model yet. Like some somebody scratch made a model out of like. Out of the, I'm talking about the Storm Raven, so Scratch made a Storm Raven, but the problem is that one has Storm Raven parts on it. So. Yeah, yeah it's kind of weird. Uh, yeah, it looks like a flying pig, you know? You yeah. throw wings on a pig and throw it in the air, that's what it would look like. But yeah, other than that, we do thank you for watching the Basement Collective Battle Report. Now, this is this video was coming out on a Tuesday, so yesterday you would have saw, saw the winners of the current raffle we have, because we should be at 200. We should have been at 200 subscribers. So, there's a new one, new new giveaway and we'll give away some forge with models uh 10 forge with corn berserkers and a forge with rhino with world eater doors so definitely go check that out that giveaway is going to be for 500 subscribers we also have the facebook one going away but other than that we do thank you for watching another basement collective like i said we have another terrain set on the way another alien style terrain set so um so maybe a tyranid style fungus type thing definitely looking forward to get that finished we have a table we're going to be building soon and get some frontline gaming mats for that. So we have a bunch of plans. Take some time to get it finished, but we'll get it finished. There's more showcases coming up. But this has been uh, another Basement Collective Battle Report. Once again, we had, what was 1,500? Yeah. 1,500 of Orcs versus Blood Angels. I have Kevin. And Eric. And keep on wargaming, guys.